Well, Coach, first of all, how does a coach know when you're ready for the season? And do you have a feel yet if you're ready? Or I mean, it doesn't have to be a finished product Monday, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, we're 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 ready. We're excited to play. I know that um, uh, you know this week after our second um, exhibition game or scrimmage, whatever, kind of a longer week. Our last probably opportunity to really focus on us, and then it's a lot of game prep. So today, it's the first time we're really in the game prep mode and, and preparing against an opponent with a real scout and things. So uh, we get that started today, and then it uh, stays that way really until March. So, um, but our our guys are excited to get out there and play. Take away from that Robert Moore scrimmage against Villanova. They're playing pretty close. Yeah, they did. They did play him really well. They have um, you know a ton of new 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 faces just like we do. So uh, I, I thought uh, you know very competitive game. They they present some challenges there that um, uh, you know we're going to have to prepare for and be ready for. But um, overall, you know we it's every every you know I tell the guys like every night's you, you got to be ready to play. Uh, period. And and uh, I think our guys will be excited to play on Monday. Or is that again sort of an experiment going on? Yeah, I think we we have a, a pretty good idea what that rotation is going to look like right now. It can always you know change. Uh, like I tell the guys all the time, your role is not permanent. Um, you know, maybe you're a starter playing thirty some minutes, uh, but don't don't be satisfied. Uh, um, and then the same with. Uh, you know, guys that maybe aren't getting as much opportunity as they would like to continue to work and, and, and push because uh, you never know when those opportunities are going to come. It could be an injury. It could be, uh, um, you know, foul trouble, whatever it may be. Uh, um, and then just playing well in practice and continue to, to put yourself in the best position possible. How many do you think, like, Monday when you're in the heat of it, how many? How many eight, nine, ten, twelve? Yeah, we're what? probably in that eight, eight, to, eight to ten range. Um, um, eight. Eight solid, you know, for significant minutes, and then that ninth and tenth guy, you know, spot minutes here and there, and, and then we'll see see how it goes as we move forward. You guys got all your bullets in the, in the gun, or anyone dealing with injuries? Or uh, we'll um, we'll have uh, Jaden Stone. We'll, we'll be out um, um, for a period of time. We'll, we'll see see how long that is um, with a kind of upper body, we'll call it injury. So. Um, that'll be kind of day to day as we move forward there. Different about your preparation, which you know your procedure, your process, what you do, or is it kind of a standard thing with from like scouting to what you do with your team? As, as we get ready for games, yeah, it'll be pretty standard as we move forward. Like our routine will be, um, uh, we try to stay pretty consistent with it. Uh, you know, you got if you have three days before before a game, then it's a little bit different. Uh, if it's two games, uh, two days before a game, uh, it's uh, you know we're same film work, uh, same approach, the same way we review and prepare is um, uh, try to keep it as consistent as possible. Jay, you get banged up in practice. Was that what it was? Yeah. yeah. So when you're going along, three, do you have numbers in mind? For, for instance, three-point shooting. I wanted to take 25, but I don't want to take 35. How, do you put anything like that on it? No, we we really don't. We just um, we're going to play offense, and then what what that what that ends up being is what it is. We, we want to take what the defense gives us. So if, if one night they're, they're giving us 33s, we'll, we'll take 33s. If they're trying to take the threes away, then we need to be able to pivot and go like, well, we got to drive the ball. And, and I think you have to um, be consistent that way. Otherwise, uh, you end up just, you know, um, maybe taking shots that aren't really available that night or aren't there. I, I don't think you want to be stubborn on that, in my opinion, as an offense. We want to be as flexible as possible. Three-point shooting team is this one compared to others you've had, you know, right in line, better, worse. What yeah, think? I, I think we got a lot of guys that, that can make shots. Uh, very capable three-point shooting. We'll, we'll, again, we'll see when when the game lights are on what that looks like. But I, I do think we got guys that um, can have a night, uh, which is always good to have. You know, several guys that can go get you 20 on any, any given night, and and I, I think we got some multiple options there for that. Guy or guys that have been. The the most consistent from day one to where you are right now. Can you single out any that you would think of that's been dependable and consistent? And I think we got a collection of them that have been pretty good. Yeah, everybody has their days here and there that they're better or may not have a day. But 
you know, I think you'll see as those starters have done a, a pretty consistent job. That's, you know, why they're probably in that starting lineup, too. Uh, but uh, I think we have a, a good group of, of guys that have, um, you know, given us great effort in practice and, and it's starting to show up. And, you know, in the two exhibition games that we had, I, I, I liked their approach to it. That will take what's given to us philosophy. Uh, that doesn't leave teams something that they want to take away, I guess. Uh, what's, what's the value of that rather than saying, I'm going to play this way? Yeah, I mean, we're still going to play the same way. We're still going to run offense the same way. It's just, uh, you know, maybe maybe the play that uh, one night it, it uh, you're getting a three out of that play, and the next night it might be a back cut. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing that we want our guys to do is, is – is when you're playing offense, trust your instincts, and 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 you can play faster that way. You, know, you play more effective that way, uh, not just be a robot. Uh, uh, we we want them to, um, you know, be able to, you know, go go make a play that's needed at that time. Big experimental guy in in November. I mean, all, they all count to your resume. But are you a you like to tweak and experiment, or you want to go out there and just? Put the best guys out there and win the games. No, I, I want to. We want to go win. Yeah, I, I think every night it's uh, like, how do we we win this forty minutes and and we'll we'll play the guys that we want to you know in that particular night to help us win that game. Aaron, the, the longer that the preseason has become, like you can start earlier, you can do more. How long does it take to, to kind of get in a rhythm of what's right and how much do you change from year to year to make sure it is right, it stays right? Yeah. I, I don't, there's not a lot of data to go off of on a lot of that stuff because some of those rules have changed, as, as you said, that your ac access to you know workouts and all that stuff, you know foreign trips that, that you take. But uh, older teams, younger teams, I think there's just a lot of different ways to approach it. Uh, I know this year we had to do you have a whole new group, so we spent a lot more time like install, um, you know, with offense and defense. Uh, you know, if you have a veteran group with returning players, like I had a couple times at Drake, maybe you did focus a little bit more on the individual stuff and really cleaning up things because they already know all the the install stuff. So that's kind of how we approached it. Uh, this year was a, a lot more five on five and install as we had to get everything in because everything was new to all the guys. Having five assistants, do you have five guys doing scouting reports? Do you give it to just three, or is that kind of work in progress? Yeah, we'll, we'll use all five. All five guys will kind of divide it up uh, throughout the season, and, and each each guy will have a, a scouting report. It's not new to have five guys, but you have assistant coaches you, you kind of have worked with before but haven't worked with before. Um, and is that fluid? It's kind of figuring out like what they look at and strengths, weaknesses? Yeah. That, and, like every every assistant coach, they have a different approach to how they do it. I mean, we have kind of a format we go by, and and um, and then they they put it together. I would say some new guys on our staff, uh, so they're you know we go through kind of our expectations or my expectations of what I want in the scout, and um, you know if we get done with the game, the next guy's scout, they hand it to it's in my you know backpack for me to start working with them that that very night after our game. So, um, but. Some of that takes time, just as assistant coaches, new assistant coaches. That um, hey, what what do I want? But um, we try not to make it too tricky. Who makes a question? You're, you're going to play games for six months when you count those preseason games in October. Is that too long? I mean, can you keep the guys? That's a long time to keep guys' attention. 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kids. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it is hard. Uh, you know, it's, I think the way we do practices too. We we kind of. You want a lot of energy and enthusiasm in practice, and it's a long time to keep it there. Um, uh, so that's why I think it's important as your as a staff that you have some some energy from your staff, uh, and they can provide a little bit of that, a little bit of that as well. So anything you can do to help these guys get through a long grinding season is um, certainly good. And uh, I think we get great energy from our staff, managers, you know, whoever it is that's in that gym. You know, we want them clapping. <laughs> now but do you keep an eye on that in february and yeah i think from february like from a practice standpoint we pull it way back you know we'll we'll be on the floor about you know 50 to 60 minutes is all it, it's meant to be sharp and quick and focused but keep them as fresh as possible just kind of curious uh opening nights i mean there are hundreds of different things that you know jitters and getting everyone together and 
Um, but for you as a coach, I mean, you only get one first game at West Virginia. Uh, nervous or pressure to make a good impression or just, you know, kind of your thoughts in, in that area? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't feel pressure, but I, I think every game you, you – it's a good thing. Like I want a little nerves. I want to be excited. Like that's uh, that's why we do this. So um, certainly excited. You know, for for us as a as a team, as a staff, to to get out there and, and play for real. Um, and uh, I think from a coaching standpoint, the only thing I really care about is that we go play the, the way we want to play. Um, and that's what I'm most excited to, to get us out there and, and go do that. What was your very first game at Drake like? Do you still remember that moment? Or? Yeah, I mean that's. Uh, the first game, I, I, as a head coach, yeah. it's certainly certainly a different feeling. But um, um, you know, you're excited. You you want you want your your team to do well. You want to know that all the all all the preparation you did was it, it was the right stuff, right. so that when you show up on game day, that um, you know you can go get wins, and that's uh, ultimately what what we're going to try and do on Monday. Just against Charleston, your routine was out on the floor. Is that your normal routine to get out on the floor and see what's going on? I know some coaches like to be in a locker room, be by themselves. Yeah, I'll, mix, I'll mix up the pregame a little bit, uh, just okay. uh, especially early in the year. I like to be out there making sure we're we're doing the warm ups the way we want it done, and, and especially with a new new group and stuff, and making sure there's nothing that um, you know. I don't want us wasting time out there. So just getting a little feel for that uh, with the guys uh, early in the year. But I don't like sitting back in that room by myself. It's too long. <laughs> Not looking at your iPad right. or whatever stuff. You no. cut it all. Usually, uh, so some of those warm-ups and stuff, and then I'll go back and we'll go through my play sheet and, and notes that we have, just quick quick notes um, just to, to review. But How many plays do you take into a game? A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our, our our playbook's pretty uh, pretty extensive, so um, but we'll we'll take out of that group. You can always pull from it, uh, but we go into a game, you know, and and pull out ten to fifteen type plays that we think will work for this game, and that's what we'll go in, and that's the the reps we'll take in the two days of practice leading up to it. That's what we'll focus on the most. But then also, maybe in the course of a game, you're like you see something that you've can just pull it out of the rest of that playbook and, and use it um, at that time. Oh, you've got a lot of multiple options. That you were kind of referencing earlier that can be the result of that, so it's not the static one set this guy is shooting on this point, correct? Yeah, I mean, there, there will be sets that are designed to get a three-point shot for a, a specific person. That doesn't mean we have to shoot it on, on that set, but, you know, if someone hits one and, and we're trying to, you know, Keep them going, get them going. You know, we'll try to run a play for them to do that. But uh, like I've told the guys, that, you know, we've had times in practice, um, uh, even in our scrimmage, where they were taking something away. It's like, well, if they took it away, we can't get the the, the high post entry or something. Just go make a play now. Now take advantage of the fact that we have some space to go drive it. Uh, so again, I'd run the play, uh, try to execute it, but take what the defense gives you. Was this a long off season? I mean, did it feel long? I mean, or, well, Monday night you get out and you're like, oh, finally, if we get to, you know, is, is there any, any yeah, I think it's of? a longer off season. You know, anytime you, you you take a new job, the season gets done. There's no, there's just no chance to catch your breath, so to speak. But um, right now, is uh, I'm I'm excited. I can't, I can't wait to go play, get our guys out there in front of everybody, and, and go compete. So you got you got family coming. How many tickets you got out for the game on Monday? Uh, that, there's a, some families coming. I got uh, some more friends just just coming in for the game and stuff. And there's, so there's, I think there's about 12 of them making the trip uh, into Morgantown. So excited to excited to have them there and, and uh, obviously family here in town. But uh, yeah, about a dozen. Yeah, about a dozen. So. so you've been on both sides of this major versus mid major early season matchup. Are, are the mid majors a little more dangerous? In, in early season, because maybe the majors haven't quite got it all figured out yet. I mean, I think every game's dangerous. I think I just uh, I approach every one pretty much the same. It's um, I, I don't I don't ever take take winning and losing for granted. Like you, you got to pour everything into every game to to put yourself in the best position to go win it. So um, we'll, we'll treat this game like it's national championship. <laughs> I mean, you were in that uh, seat last year as a bye game guy. 
how, how did you approach it? How do you go about it? And how do you approach it now? Uh, the same. I mean, we, we had opportunities uh, at, at Drake to buy games as well. Yeah. Um, so, again, I, I, I never, um, you know, take it for granted at all. Like it, it's we're, we're going to prepare the same way, uh, you know, no matter who we're playing. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll put everything into it uh, from a preparation standpoint, X's and O's, and and, uh, and, and hopefully that's – hopefully we got the right plan, you know. Actually, get to practice with this team and, and start to mold it. You probably have an idea in your head, like what you want it to look like based on what you do, right? Um, from then to now, like how much has that stayed true? And then how much has the talent and the ability kind of bent it in a different direction based on what they can do? I, I, I just think overall, I, I, if we look at our group from summer till now, and even early in this fall till now, I. I I think the identity has started to, to shine through a little bit. You know, if we can do it consistently, that'll be, you know, kind of our main goal is uh, that they are playing really hard right now, and I love that. Um, I think they're playing very unselfishly and together. Uh, so I'm excited to see as we get into games now that, you know, just being able to do that for 40 minutes every single night is our, our challenge. Uh, um, and, you know, like every team, you can – you have – nights you've really, really got it going and then you have nights where you're it's a struggle um, but if we can just stay consistent in those areas um, we'll, we'll be able to come out uh, on the right end I'm curious like so you guys enter the season and everyone's trying to figure out you know okay, who you, who, you, who are you guys and, 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 and you know, what are they going to be able to do and, and you know how are they going to look and everyone's still trying to kind of figure that out is that Maybe fun for you as opposed to like having a team that, you know, had you know, five, six, seven guys coming back. Everyone kind of, you know, there's expectations. I mean, there's two sides of that coin. You're on one side this year. Is that fun yeah. at all? They're both fun. They're, kind of They're just or? completely different. You know, when you got all these returners back and you kind of know what you have versus a, a group of new guys and you don't know for sure on game night exactly what that's going to look like. And that'll change, I think, as the season goes as well. Of um, we get into games like, hey, we got to get uh, you know Toby on the block more, or we got to get Amani more threes, or whatever it may be. That that'll start to um, each game you you'll be able to maybe add to to what you're doing and, and change and, and tweak it a little bit. So that's kind of a fun part of of being able to kind of adjust as the season goes. And even when you have a veteran group, it's like, well, how do you keep them engaged <laughs> so that they're, they're not bored with it? So you're trying to find new ways to kind of you know keep them interested too. Unveiling a secret, almost isn't it? <laughs> uh, to some degree, or yeah, I mean that that's uh, you know hopefully fans that come out on Monday. This is the first time a lot of them you know outside the exhibition game that they're going to see them play you know live against a, another opponent. So uh, I, I think that's fun for fans too. You know they get to come out and kind of grow with us a little bit. I don't want to ruin your lunch, but you got five uh, five of the ten teams in AP poll first time in school history one conference. You got at least seven games against top ten teams and possibly more. Uh, are you mentally preparing yourself and your team for what's ahead for you guys? Yeah, good thing I'm not eating today. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, we, we we know what's in front of us, and and uh, again, we're excited about those challenges and stuff as as they they come up to us, but. Um, like I said, in general, it's going to be it's like we got Robert Morris on Monday. That's all I care about right now. You were talking about how the team has changed. How different is the coach that West Virginia got as the one that went to Drake, uh, you know, five, six years ago? Well, six years ago, you know, as a, a, a new head coach, you know, and, and now I think, um, you know, from a, just a coaching perspective, hopefully, you know, you can always continue to grow and learn. I don't, I don't care how long you're in this profession. Like, so we'll challenge ourselves to continue to do that. But certainly comfortable with with um, you know where we are. Hopefully, it'll be just as consistent uh, you know with the way we approach things here as as, as we would have at Drake. Any, uh, any lessons you took from the six years at Drake? Uh, I think every day, every year was a new year. Every day is a new day. Uh, I think the biggest thing is again just the consistent consistency you have to have on you know after wins, after losses, uh, the way you approach guys, uh, the way you communicate with them, your relationship with them. Uh, again, it's just being real, being genuine with with your team, and and you know. 
being as consistent as possible and try to avoid the roller coasters a little bit. Anything else for Coach? Anything surprising? You mentioned things you're happy with and content with, but surprises as you get to know him? Uh, not yet. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's some coming, uh, but I just, I just like the way the group is, has continued to compete and, and uh, work and practice. And, and, you know, we have five more months of that, but uh, again, I, I think they've made great strides. And, and as long as they'll continue to stay with that mindset, uh, we'll continue to get better and better as a team. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. See you Monday.